Many elite universities have failed when it comes to stopping anti-Semitism on campus, according to new analysis from the Anti-Defamation League. Harvard, MIT, Princeton, and Stanford were among the list of schools that received F ratings from the ADL on the state of anti-Semitism on their campuses. Since the start of the Israel-Hamas war on October 7th, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia has reportedly been on the rise in the United States and on campus. The ADL's new campus anti-Semitism report card graded 85 schools on the state of anti-Semitism on their campuses and how the schools are responding. The ADL assessed the schools across 21 different criteria that examined the school's actions and policies, Jewish life on campus, and reported anti-Semitic incidents on campus. Only two schools, Brandeis University and Elon University, received A's. Meanwhile, a video of a confrontation between a UC Berkeley student and law professor went viral this week. Professor Catherine Fisk and her husband Erwin Chermerinsky, who is the UC Berkeley law dean, hosted students at their home when a pro-Palestinian activist student stood up and started speaking about the holy month of Ramadan and how she will not be breaking fast while people are being killed in Gaza. Let's watch some of that. Not only from you material yes. sustenance, yes. not, not, not only from material not only from material We have attorneys. We have attorneys. Okay. In response to the incident, an Iranian Jewish refugee and activist posted on X, Imagine being so blinded by anti-Semitism that you enter the home of the world's expert on constitutional law and falsely claim it is your First Amendment right to spread vicious hate speech. If she had bothered to attend Erwin Chemerinsky's lectures, read his textbooks, use his style guides, or review his Supreme Court cases, she would know that the First Amendment does not apply to a private residence. Chemerinsky politely tells her that in the video over and over again. So, Jess, let's start with this report from the ADL. Um, I, I do believe that there is a rise in anti-Semitism, but I don't think it's to the level that the ADL puts it at. I know that they often conflate criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism, which um, is not something I'm interested in doing. But that being said, there have been a lot of cases on campus where it is outright anti-Semitic, some of the things the students are doing. I think tearing down the, post the posters of the Israeli hostages is a great example of that. At Boston University, I reported on an incident where students were spray painting uh, characters of Jewish noses on uh, rocks around campus, tearing down flyers, referring to Hamas as freedom fighters. And so I, I feel kind of uh, torn on this issue in terms of what these grades are because I'd like to look more into the methodology and the incidents that the ADL is counting. But at the same time, it does seem like there is a legitimate problem happening in terms of um, anti-Jewish hatred being spread on campus. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure what this professor's specific role is with uh, dealing with the endowment. It seems that this was a protest to call for the university's divestment from profiting off of apartheid in Israel and, and supporting Israel in various ways by you know, having investments in companies that primarily operate in Israel and profit off of the occupation. It's a very uh, common reason for protest. So I, I'm not sure what this dean's involvement was with that. I don't know what the recency of potentially, you know, voting on what the investments were. Uh, yeah, or why this was a protest stage at this particular time. I do know that this was a dinner that was hosted at the dean's house who is Jewish and that students were invited, you know, who were Muslim. And it is in the time of Eid where they would be fasting. And it, you know, it seems that it was intentionally held based on what of a lot of students that I've read have been posting, you know, on X about this incident and on Instagram commenting on this viral video, that it was intentionally held during a time of fasting so that the Muslim students would not go. And that that is what prompted this response from a student that they felt unwelcomed and they felt like it was intentional and so a good time to make a political statement. So, yeah, I think a lot of the the commentary around anti-Semitism on campus, it's difficult to rely on a lot of those numbers. As you said, a lot of people have conflated criticism of Israel with some kind of anti-Semitic remarks. Of course, those two things are, are very different. Israel cannot claim to be representative of all Jewish people, especially because we know a lot of Jewish people, those living in the United States as well, are critical of Israel. Um, a state cannot represent an entire population of people that aren't its citizens. That's just not something the United States has ever supported. It's just not something that makes sense in a lot of people's brains. And what we have seen, though, is you know violent cases 
where in, in some Palestinian students have been shot walking in public, wearing a keffiyeh. We have seen the rise of anti-Muslim rhetoric on campuses. Uh, we've seen the rise of anti-Muslim, you know, actions of hate when we had in Texas a woman who uh, was wearing a hijab. She was a Muslim woman. She was a doctor and she was attacked and stabbed in a park. We had that instance, you know, where the landlord who was white did attack, you know, a Muslim uh, child who was the child of one of his tenants. And so we have had very violent cases of uh, anti-Muslim, Islamophobic actions ac across the United States. And so to, to focus on anti-Semitism, the Anti-Defamation League, I think, you know, it would be fair to also acknowledge the, in many cases, violent anti-Muslim, Islamophobic actions as well. Yeah, I think they did in the report, but I'd have to double check. Um, I do know that in the case of the students being shot when they were wearing the kafayas, that there is not evidence yet that that was the motivation for the attack. Um, obviously, the investigation is still ongoing, but um, you pointed out a couple of other incidents as well. Going back to this protest at the dean's home, I, I'd be curious to know what evidence those students have to say that he intentionally held it during their fasting period so Muslim students wouldn't attend. Uh, it seems like they're just saying that because they were upset that they couldn't go or couldn't eat. And I, I don't know, did they present any proof that he was intentionally trying to keep Muslim students from attending the dinner? I mean, to hold it on the one one day of fasting during the, the Ramadan holiday of Eid al-Fitr, I mean, it, it does seem that there are many other days they could have held this dinner, but to hold it on one of the holiest, you know, Muslim days, I'm not sure if students raised concerns and they ignored them, but um, I mean, they were aware that some students would be celebrating this holiday. It's a very well-known holiday. Yeah, I did read the email he sent to students and it said that he offered three different dates for the dinner. So presumably they could have attended one of the other two dinners then instead of attending this one and then causing a scene at this guy's private home, which uh, to me is a very rude thing to do. But nonetheless, um, going back to the ADL report as well, I mean, I, I'm with you that, again, there's a conflation of anti-Semitism with just criticism of Israel. Um, and it's not just something that we see on college campuses, but I think in general discourse where people have been accused of being anti-Semitic for just normal criticism of what's going on in Gaza. Um, the student in this case who protested at the dean's home had posted a meme that uh, they said was anti-Semitic and I tend to fall on the side that it probably was. It showed the dean's face and him with a fork and a knife in uh, his hands with blood on it and said basically that he was feasting as Gaza starved and to basically accuse him of being responsible for what's happening in Gaza is what some people refer to as blood libel against Jewish people. And I don't know if you've seen the meme that she posted and, and if you have any thoughts about it, but wanted to get your reaction. Yeah, it does sound like there were lawyers at this uh, you know dinner. Obviously one of these deans is the dean of the law school. So some lawyers will be present but it does seem that there was a moment beforehand where one of the students made an exclamation in Arab and that resulted in the host sort of like running at her very aggressively. And so for the, the interaction between them to, to start with something like that, was she saying something, you know, to honor Eid, to honor that they were fasting? I'm not sure. Uh, but as it was described to the Los Angeles Times that one of the attendees at dinner said, you know, she said something in Arab and it caused the host to run aggressively at her and feel that it was, you know, just because she was, you know, saying something that was in her faith. Would you do this to someone saying grace before eating a meal? I'm not sure. Uh, but it was something that she felt she needed to say and then to have a response to run aggressively at her. It was this reaction of, are you doing this because I'm wearing a keffiyeh, because I'm saying things in Arabic? And then there was this back and forth of, you know, I agree with what's going on in uh, in Palestine. I agree with you on that. And then, you know, another response of it, it's not a genocide, actually. And so there was a bit of back and forth that wasn't fully captured. And so I would like to see all of that. But, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this meme was that one is there. Uh, liked. I can't comment on a meme I haven't seen, but uh, people saying that those defending Israel have blood on their hands has been a very common thing that's not specific, you know, to, to Jewish faith or, or traditional anti-Semitic remarks. 
Yeah, I think the fact that she put the dean's face on it is what really crossed the line for me, um, trying to hold him personally responsible for um, what's going on in Gaza. I thought that was definitely beyond the pale. Even if it's not anti-Semitic, it's completely inappropriate to do that for an official at a university, especially someone who's invited you into their home to eat dinner there. Um, based on what I read in the reporting, I obviously don't have a full video of it either, but according to um, some of the reports that have come out, she stood up and basically started shouting. It wasn't that she was like sitting and praying or whatever it was that that student claimed she was doing, but she stood up and shouted something in protest. And that was when the owners of the home came up to her and asked her to leave. And instead she had this microphone. I don't know where the heck she got the microphone if she brought it from outside and started giving that speech that we saw in the video. So, I mean, I think regardless, we can say that she acted inappropriately at somebody else's home who's invited her for dinner. Um, I, I don't think that there's a justification for behaving in that way. It's just disrespectful. And I know I personally wouldn't do it, but um, she was removed, and now there's a, a whole debate over whether or not she was justified in her actions. So we'll let that continue, and we'll be back with more on Rising after this.